Okay, uh, uh, recapping uh, Saturday, um, you know, after watching the film, thought our kids played extremely hard uh, throughout the game. There was no no quit in the bunch. Um, we uh, we didn't flinch. You know, I don't think the team the team flinched. That's something that that I talk about. Don't flinch, and they didn't. Um, and we've got a lot of little things that that we need to to clean up, and that's uh, kind of what a young team, uh, you know, team with a bunch of guys that have played in their first Division One game will uh, will do. So uh, I, we expect some improvement from week one to week two. Uh, it's it's uh, tough going against the uh, what's now the number one team in the nation in your opener, but shoot, if, if you're going to do it, might as well do it right. So uh, it was fun going against uh, those guys, and and the and the, the bad news is we. We didn't come out on top, but the good news is we get another shot at them in in a couple of weeks. So uh, that's what that's what we're looking looking forward to. Um, with that, we're on to uh, Southern Utah, who uh, played extremely well against a pretty good Northern Arizona team, and and actually you know was was up with 50 seconds left on the road. And anybody knows it's difficult to uh, to win on the road uh, in this conference. So, um, uh, but I like uh, both sides of the ball. Their, their fronts are very good. Um, quarterback is is very accurate uh, for for Southern Utah. Um, their receivers uh, run run very good routes. Smart. They get to the, the to the down markers and they're a yard deeper and they get first downs. Uh, number 14 is a tough uh, tough as what we describe a scrappy receiver. So he's going to be a, a little handful. Uh, to deal with, they spread the field, do a good job of that. Uh, got a little little uh, slot receiver number five who uh, had ten catches, and so they're going to try to give him the ball and get him get him uh, running around. Um, defensively, uh, they have two defensive ends that are they're about as any any as good as anybody you'll see in the conference. Number uh, number eleven and number ninety one. I, I give you numbers rather than names. That's how coaches look at it. Uh, got a, got a very solid, strong safety or excuse me, free safety, uh, number 18, and, uh, and, and a very physical linebacker. So, uh, like I said, the front on uh, their offensive line is big, their defensive line is big, and, and it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a big challenge. Looking at the, the tape from Saturday's game, just a, a couple more specifics. I mean, what did you see sort of on the second watch with, with Tyler? Just uh, we, we got to work on some control issues, but other than that, you know, he, uh, he he's very good pocket presence, uh, understands when to get out and, and, and take off running. Um, but no, Tyler, Tyler played a good game, but he can, he's, he can play better and he's going to play better in his second game. So uh, uh, we're looking forward to improving on last week's performance. And then the other thing that I was really curious about, I mean, what, what were you guys, what did you guys diagnose as sort of the issue in the, second half for the defense I mean that that run that they had in the third quarter well just we got a guy cut out of a gap and and you know truth be told uh, uh the referees missed uh, well I'm never mind um not allowed to talk talk about that but uh <laughs> that's uh but uh uh it's it's just we got a guy cut out of a gap and and missed a tackle and and that's that's you know that's what happens you know they had a couple long runs uh, one of their long runs, uh, one of our corners, uh, Cam Davis, made a particularly great effort play and and and, and got him down. But uh, uh, like I said, just a matter of someone getting cut out of a gap. We got to do a better job of of holding gap integrity. Is it done with me already? Oh, <laughs> hey, coach. Um, can you just kind of walk us through like what this week is going to look like, um, preparing to hit the road to Utah? Yeah, uh, the only thing you know, we keep a we keep a pretty uh, consistent schedule. That way, the kids know uh, what, when, and where. Uh, the only thing that'll be different is uh, we'll 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 jump on a bus about eleven thirty on Friday and, and drive down there, which means we'll have a, a early morning Friday practice and then uh, and then uh, uh, eat lunch and and head on down. And uh, that that's the only big difference. Other than that, everything you know Monday through Thursday will stay the same. Uh, We'll, we'll go outside probably today and Thursday just so we get out and, and, uh, and have to look into the sun a little bit because it's going to be a beautiful day down there in Cedar City. But uh, other than that, uh, it'll be business as usual. You know, we're we're in game week, you know, game mode. So uh, Monday is is uh, uh, a day where we make corrections and introduce the defense. Tuesday, Wednesday are work days. Thursday, work, uh, work all of our special teams. And then Friday, 
uh, just have a short workout before we go. Um, Southern Utah, they scored uh, 33 points last week. What do you think are just the biggest things that your defense is going to have to work on this week to stop them? Well, like I said, dis disrupting disrupting their receivers. You know, they're 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 uh, well schooled uh, on where to go, on how to get to uh, uh, get to their landmarks. Um, like I said, you know, earlier on, on their third downs, they'll they'll run to the chains and get one yard deeper. You know, that that's a sign of a well coached well coached bunch. And then the uh, uh, the uh, quarterback very efficient gets it there. So we're gonna have to you know somehow some way manufacture some uh, some uh, uh, pressure on the guy to to get him uh, out of his rhythm. But uh, if you let him just stand back there and throw, um, he's gonna he's gonna tear you apart. So. He said they've they've done a they've done a good job. I think last week was his first game, uh, number four, I believe, and uh, and uh, he showed you know he's a very capable, very very uh, competent quarterback. Yeah, the new guy. I mean, does he bring anything uh, you know different at that spot than their last quarterbacks? Because they've been you know they haven't really had a guy consistently at that position. Or yeah, he's like I said, he he he's solid, you know. Uh played at Snow College, I think. And and yeah, I think he was on the roster last year for some or twenty when I say last year, I mean twenty nineteen. Uh, but um no, he he's he did a good job against Northern Arizona and and you know he he's he's definitely got our attention and uh, we're gonna have to have a, a good uh, great game plan on on not only the front but in the back end. Um, Coach, do you feel like the guy, I know that a lot of the guys said that um, they were pretty nervous. Do you feel like a lot of them got a lot of their nerves out last week? And do you think that'll help them this week going um, into this game? Well, yeah, it's, uh, the, the, you know, the deal is, like, like I said, Mike Ferreter asked our offense to raise their hands about how many guys uh, played against Weaver in 2019 and three of them, three of them, one of them sitting in the room that you'll talk to here in a minute. Um, so we, you know, had a virtually, you know, a, a, a new group. Of, of receivers, other you know, Tanner Connor didn't even play against them last year, last time. Um, so yeah, that you get that out of the way. We had four of our of our of our four secondary starters. Three of them had never played, never not only uh, have never not only didn't play Weaver, but haven't played in a Division One game. And so uh, that was that was a big factor as well. Three of our starting offensive linemen uh, had very minimal. Uh, or very minimal experience or had not had not played in the game division one game. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot of things, you know, uh, taken care of. And I think we will, you know, coach coach speak as always you improve most from game one to game two. And that's what we're hoping will happen here. For those that, um, you know, had played before, but hadn't played in quite a long time, looking at the film, how do you feel like your guys kind of maybe knocked off the rust and kind of got back into the groove? Yeah, I, I think, I, well, you know, you look at guys like O'Shea Trujillo, he played a tremendous game. Guy played, the guy left it all on the field. When you always say that, you know, leave leave everything on the field, he's the one that did it. Uh, you know, you'll talk to Teron here in a second. I'm not just saying this because he's in here. Uh, Teron at center uh, uh, controlled the whole thing. That's what the center's supposed to do, and that's what we expect of him. And and, and he played uh, he played a great game. You know, Tanner Connor uh, got back to form a little bit. And, uh, and, you know, Malachi had his, had his uh, moments as well, you know, so some of those guys that, uh, that had played in the past did, you know, the, the rest, the rest came off pretty quickly. It was, it was good. And, you know, now we get all these guys with a, with another game experience. I like about, Wade Dillon. <laughs> talk about with the, the young guys, I mean, having a lot of things to correct and that's expected. What does that process look like? I mean, you pointed out in the film room and then and then what does the process look like from there when you're trying to, you know, talk about correcting these mistakes? Yeah. You just you just chase them around on the field. You know, you don't cut anybody any slack at any time and make sure that, you know, they're taking their steps right. They're getting into the right, you know, in, into the right route or, or, or blocking the right person or, or fitting in the right gap. And that begins today when we do our uh, our corrections. You know, we'll start practice today with corrections from last week. And then, and then transition to uh, to the next opponent. And I said it's just a matter of, uh, you know, football is a, a thing where rep it's a rep repetition type deal. To uh, uh, you got to see things over and over and over again in order to be, you know, to perfect it. 
does the fact that there's only six games in the schedule kind of does that change how you prep week to week at all with any more urgency or anything like that? No, no it's uh, football. When you do football, you should only have one speed. You know, whether we have two games, whether we have 12 games, whether we have six games, we only know one way to do things around here. And that's what we're preparing for. And I think I mentioned it maybe after the game Saturday, you know, there's been talk like, oh, this is just a glorified spring ball. Well, I dare you to say that to anybody on our team and and what the effort that they've put into this. This is not a glorified spring ball. This is a, uh, this is it. We're, we're going for it. Coach, I know you got a young team. Is there anyone in particular that you're pushing to step up as a leader in any spot? Uh, leadership, you know, when, well, when we say young team, you know, you can even say inexperience is young team. There's young men in here, Jaden Dawson, who you're going to talk to. You know, he's considered young only from the standpoint he hasn't had a whole lot of experience, but we expect him to step up in a leadership role on the back end. Um, but, you know, we, we do have some, you know, Teron, you know, believe, for being a veteran, he's a, he's a sophomore, uh, you know, he's, or, you know, he's, he, he's a young guy still, and we expect him to provide a lot of leadership uh, up front as well. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where, where we're looking, you know, the young guys on defense really not because there's some good leadership over there with O'Shea and, and uh, Ken Smith and Connor Wills and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it, young guys, you just let it, uh, you let that kind of matriculate. <laughs> This is going to be a, a big topic, I think, you know, playing the spring season and then going right into a fall season. Where did you think the guys were in terms of, you know, like fitness uh, on Saturday after sort of the, the prep period that you had in the spring? I thought uh, I thought our guys were did the right thing in the month of December. They came back uh, in January uh, in, in, I'm not going to say in super great shape, but in reasonable shape that allowed us to, to start conditioning and start getting them going. And, and they're in, they're in fine shape right now. Plus with uh, Brandon Stevens in the weight room, the work that he does with them, you know, it's, it's all encompassing rather, you know, not just cardiovascular, but physically as well. And the reason why you lift weights is to uh, not only get bigger, stronger, faster, and be able to push guys around, but it also helps prevent injuries. And like I said, with the work that Brandon's done in the, in the weight room, uh, has enabled us as well. And I, you know, I, I think we got a little bit tired, but that's to be expected in the first game. Uh, but I think, I think we'll be fine. I, the, the guys did a great job coming back in shape and then, and then jumping right into the conditioning and stuff that we did in January before we started camp. Yeah. I saw Mitch real quick before the game. Uh, he's back in the weight room, helping Brandon, it seems like. Yeah. I think he's doing some internship or something. I don't know. <laughs> I tell him he should be playing this year. We shouldn't have redshirted him his first year. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, him, yeah, he, uh, 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 Mitch and Mikey should still be here. But uh, uh, yeah, I, it's it's good to see him over there helping out. Yeah.